Hola, Hola bon, bon dia. dia. Today we have another week of renovating and working towards our goal of living a, living a simpler, more sustainable lifestyle. Super excited to share our progress with you guys. It's really starting to come together. She's a slave driver, though, and made me work on my birthday. I made your birthday cake. Save me. <laughs> okay, so Grant did spend his birthday parging the wall on the addition, but he did an awesome job, so let's go check it out. What you doing? Cutting our house down to the ground. <laughs> Cut it all up into pieces and throw it away. Really? Yeah. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds made up. Well, it is. So for some reason, when they put an addition onto the original house, they... Were drunk. Yeah, I don't know why they would do it like this other than they must have been drunk because the blocks are actually sticking out beyond the parging of the wall when what they should have done is line the tijolos up with the original tijolos and leave room so that the parging would bring it to the same level as the original and you know making it square would have helped too so if you line up where you can see the original wall of the house is straight right there and then this one comes in towards me on an angle so he's removing so. a section of the tijolos or a portion of them so that he can even out where the two walls meet yeah it's not going to be straight, but it'll be less noticeable. It'll be less unstraight. <laughs> it'll be less crooked. What do you want, huh? Are you bugging me? What are you doing? Making holes and filling holes. Filling holes? Yeah. I'm breaking the house and fixing it? Breaking the house and fixing the house. Excellent. Grant has been working on parging the wall. So he finished the scratch coat on this section yesterday. And he's done a good portion actually of the parging. So he's just sponging it now. Next, I'm going to use the wire brush to clean up this area so that we can patch that. So I want to get any loose stuff off. So you can see I've scrubbed this area and I also went in and scraped all of the cracks to open them up a little bit so that the new cement will go into all of the cracks and everything will have a nice bond and seal everything up. So it is ready to be repaired. So far I did this section from here, I think you can see a line. Yeah. yeah, you can see a line right here. So it's a little bit darker on the right side. And that is because from here over, I have scrubbed this bottom section with the wire brush, trying to get rid of any of the mold spots. So, give you an idea that's what it looks like before even after the power washing this bottom portion has a fair amount of mold still stuck to it 
So I've gone along and scrubbed it off of the bottom portion here. It doesn't seem to want to come off towards the bottom where the parging ends and it's, yeah, it's more just the cement and rocks. And I did a small section on the front as well. So from here over. It's hard work and it makes a fair amount of dust. So I was wearing goggles and a dust mask. So I think I'm going to have to do it in sections. I think that's it for today. As you can see, we finally finished painting the guest room. Look, it doesn't come off of my hands. <laughs> I know, it's awesome. And next week, we'll be experimenting with colored cement flooring. So make sure you tune in next week to see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. And if you guys could give us a like and share the video with your friends and drop us a comment. We love to hear from you guys and it helps to grow our channel. So thank you. I have sanded all of the drywall compound patching that I did on the walls and I've thoroughly vacuumed this room. So I'm just about to wipe the walls down with water, but I wanted to show you why you should be wearing a dust mask when you do something like this. So kind of funny, but gross. All of my nose hairs are now white because they're covered in drywall compound dust, which probably is not healthy. So wear a dust mask. So this is the most difficult part right now because of all of the electrical wires. The wiring is pretty much all redone for this room, but we still need to put the plastic casings to cover the wires and keep them in place better. So it's still a bit of a scrambled mess and I'm just trying to paint around them. If I get a little bit of paint on them, I'm not too worried because it is going to be inside the plastic uh, channel so that it looks nicer. I'm going to try and give you a better idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm working in fairly small sections at a time and I'm going both vertically and horizontally, making sure I have the paint spread evenly. And then I'm going back in with circular motions to make sure that I have the paint worked into all of the little imperfections of the wall. Like that. So it's not perfect. I'm not going for a perfect finish. If that was the goal, we would have just done drywall on the whole house. But I would like to make sure that I'm getting a full even coverage with the paint. So this seems to be the best way of doing that. If there's a better way, easier and faster way to do this with paint, <laughs> let me know in the comments because it is very time consuming and it's a little bit hard on the wrists, but it is getting good coverage. So it's the best method I've come up with so far. So if we look at the top of the door here, you can see a line So somebody has already cut the door down in size at the top and they had marked the bottom, but they never cut the bottom. Not sure why, but anyway, I'll be doing that in a future video. So we finished painting the guest room. It's very clean and bright and it actually makes the room feel bigger. 
So that is some good progress this week. Really happy with how it turned out. One step closer to finishing this room. So I've started scraping the lime wash in the dining room and they painted with lime wash over a normal paint. So I'm not sure if this is latex or an oil paint, but the yellow paint is a modern paint. And then the white is lime wash, but they didn't prep the surface properly. So the lime wash isn't sticking as well as it should. It's flaking off quite easily. And you can also see that they did a patch job with cement over top of the lime wash. You do repairs over a layer of lime wash that doesn't adhere to the paint below it. That means your repair chips off easily. And of course, now that I'm filming, it's not chipping off easily. <laughs> Let's try it from this side. Here we go. So that is why preparation is important to the success of your repairs <laughs> <laughs> or failure in this case. I don't even know what the cement's for. Well, I know I said I was going to wear some kind of dust mask next time I do something like this, but I need to wear something for eye protection. And there's no way that I can also wear a mask because even just working with the, with the goggles, I'm completely fogging them up. So I'm basically chipping the lime wash off by braille at this point because I can't really see. Our main goal is to live a simpler, more sustainable lifestyle. So next we're gonna look at sustainability in a way that often gets overlooked. Fashion production is responsible for about 10% of carbon emissions. It uses large quantities of water, creates water pollution, and at the end of the day, 85% of all textiles end up in the dump each year. Mm -hmm. And that's why you shouldn't wear clothes. That's why I don't. <laughs> no, but I am going to include more mending and altering and upcycling so you guys can learn how to save some money and also to have a smaller environmental footprint when it comes to clothing. Now, for some reason, most bikini tops are a halter style, which looks nice, but it isn't the most comfortable. So today I'm going to show you guys how to do a quick alteration to make your bikini tops more comfortable. And it'll also, bleh, it'll also save you money because you don't have to go buy a new one in a different style. Right. Make my bikini tops. <laughs> you, would you like a bikini top <laughs> to be more comfortable? Yes. <laughs> So I have a lot of halter style bikinis and because I have a lot of tension and probably from old skiing injuries in my neck, the halter style is not the most comfortable. This is a halter style bikini that I already fixed by attaching the straps down here and crossing them over so it also gives more support. It's better for swimming and snorkeling and just makes it more comfortable overall. So I'm going to pin these straps into place based on the one that I've already done that fits properly. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So if you don't already have a bikini that you can use as a template for the measurements, You'll want to put the bikini on and get someone to pin the straps in place while you're wearing it. 
if you have one to go off of, then all I did was match up where the straps start on the side at the front and follow it to where it attaches at the band. So that gives you your length and then lined it up so you can see how far across the band you want to attach it. Okay, so now that we have it pinned, I'm also checking to make sure the straps are lined up at the same distance across the band and that they're also sitting at the same angle to the band so that everything is nice and tidy and even. And before you sew anything or make any permanent changes, you want to pin it and try it on and make sure that it has a good fit. So it actually fits way better and, and it gives better support to the girls this way too. <laughs> and I mean, you could sew this on the machine. <laughs> Jack, are you helping? You're going to steal my spool, aren't you? I find it just as easy to sew something like this by hand. Although we have the distraction of a cat here. It's got his ears in it. And I usually go underneath so that you don't have the knot from the thread against your skin. And we're just going to go in and we're going to follow the existing stitching so that it, it is less noticeable that you have gone in and made alterations. There you go, that is one side done. We just have to tie off your knot at the end. And I usually try to do this close to the strap so that you're not going to feel the knot next to your skin as much because it's going to be sitting lower beside the band as opposed to up on the strap. And then you just make a couple of quick stitches so that the end of your thread isn't loose and that is one side finished. So the bikini is finished, much more comfortable this way. So I'm ready to paint. Get paint on your new fixed bikini. Well, I am using white paint. A little blend in. <laughs> it's Grant's birthday today, so I'm going to make a cake. I'm making an apple cake, but I have a giant pear from our tree. So I'm gonna add this into the mix as well. So the recipe called for six apples. Because the pear was huge, I used four apples and one pear. So I have mixed the apples, the pear, cinnamon, and white sugar. And we're gonna add this to the baking pan. Now it's ready to go in the oven. And it should be ready in about half an hour. All right, I'm ready to take the cake out. So we'll see. 
this works. Ooh, check that out. It works. Yeah. For a second there, I thought it was stuck in the pan, but it looks pretty cool. Ooh, Ooh look at that. It looks pretty good. No, it's not for you. Mavis thinks it's for her. There you go. Mavis. It's not your birthday today. You guys don't get cake. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed our video. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye! bye.